I don't know how I feel about the new camera store greeters, but it's nice, weird, it's pleasantly weird. Welcome back to EP Review TV viewers. Chris Nichols here with a short video for you today. We're looking at Nikon Z6 and Z7's brand new firmware release. It's 3.0 time. This one actually might be very exciting because 3.0 brings a lot of improvements. And a couple of things that frankly we really didn't like about the Z series autofocus. First off, initiating tracking with just the OK button was a real pain and I think they fixed that. The other thing here now, they're also adding animal eye detect AF. We want to test that. And we never found that the eye detect for people was always great. Like, Sometimes it was always on the eyelashes or whatever. So fingers crossed, we might get better pupil detection there as well. So what they've changed with the firmware now is that I don't have to use that OK button or the touch screen. I can customize function one or function two to replace that OK button. So I can click it, brings up my tracking box, put it on the subject I want, touch the shutter, it will lock on and it will follow them. And if I let go of the shutter, it'll stop tracking them. And it's a really nice system. Now, I do want to say though that if you are doing eye detect autofocusing, whether it's people or animals, you cannot use it in conjunction with the tracking, which is to say it won't auto switch for you, okay? So what do you have to do? Again, just use that function one or function two button that you've customized. If I'm focusing on Jordan, I want it to go to his eyes, I can click the button to turn the tracking off focuses on his eyes and then if I want to focus on something other than a face or eyes just click that button again and I'm right back into the tracking module. So we got a brand new feature here on the Z6 and Z7. We can now focus on animals eyes a lot like a lot of the other competitors are doing and it, right now it's just calibrated for cats and dogs but I was actually very impressed by how accurate it was. Took some pictures here of Indy with the mode on and he's got hair in front of his eyes and stuff and it still picked up the pupils very accurately so that was very nice to see. Uh, now I did also try an experiment. We wanted to switch back and forth between animal eye detect and then human eye detect and in order to do that there's no quick button that you can really customize so what I instead did was I made that feature my top menu in my menu feature and then I customized my function 2 button to bring up the top item in my menu and then I could relatively quickly change it. However something strange happened here uh, if I was an animal eye detect it would pick up Indy but then when I move it up to Jordan it would pick up Jordan's eyes and if I go back down to Indy it would pick up his eyes again so then I switch over to human eye detect and face and it would pick up Jordan's face and his eyes very accurate that's what I expected but then I go down to Indy it would pick up his eyes as well and I really couldn't see any appreciable difference uh, as far as the camera detecting eyes whether I was in human or animal mode so I don't know if that means that my dog has very human looking eyes or if I just have a very beastly looking cameraman I'm not sure I'll let you guys be the judge now as a quick side note, if you're using video, you will get human face and eye detect focusing, but with animals, if you turn that on, you'll get animal face detect, but not the actual pupil detect. So then I decided to test the eye autofocus and just see if there's any improvements there. Took some shots here of Jordan and I mean, I'm getting eyelashes in focus, not always the pupil. It's pretty close. You know, sometimes it hit, sometimes it was still just a little bit off. And you know, I guess if they did tweak the algorithms and did make changes, it's just not something that this particular test is picking up or maybe there weren't any tweaks or algorithm changes to eye detect in the first place. I can't talk to that, but I'm certainly seeing performance very similar to what I got before the firmware update. We also have some other nice improvements here that are worth mentioning. There's now support for Lexar and ProGrade CF Express cards. Uh, the Nikkor 7200 2.8 S series lens has a focus limit switch and that now engages with these cameras. Uh, there's also a nice improvement where uh, when you did manual focus override, it was quite slow before the lens started to manual focus and they've made that more responsive. And otherwise there's lots of other little bug fixes and things like that. So overall, what I'm most impressed with is having that better implementation for tracking. This now works very similar to what we see in the comp Competition, you know, Fuji cameras, Canon cameras, and it's nice to have that ease of use when you want to get that tracking to go quickly. The other thing I actually really enjoyed was the animal eye detect autofocus. I actually got very good results with that, and, and I was quite pleased with that. So, uh, unfortunately, when it came to the eye detect for people, I still feel like it's the same as it was before. Uh, so, I guess, you know, with Jordan's eyes not always being in focus, he's human after all. One last thing, I do find it strange the D780 doesn't have the same implementation support for their tracking, but that could come any day now with a firmware update. And on that same token, uh, you know, I know in the past when people would come from Nikon digital SLRs and they were used to 3D tracking and they'd pick up a Z6 or Z7, 
it was really confusing having this completely different way of setting up the tracking. Of course, we found that very annoying as well. So I think it's great now that if you are coming from a Nikon SLR into the Z system at this point with the new firmware, you're gonna find that a very easy autofocusing transition. And that's a big plus. Thanks so much for joining us. Please Instagram, Twitter, and subscribe to our channel. Please don't forget that. Go to dpreview.com. We've got an article on this firmware update if you need more details right there as well. Thanks so much for joining us. See you soon.